and welcome to our special show Bharat Trailblazers, a series where we bring you insightful and engaging conversations with enterprises and their business leaders talking about their digital transformation journey and how it has helped their business. Today we're going to put the spotlight on Lithium Urban Technologies which is reshaping India's urban transportation landscape with its electric mobility solutions. Sanjay, thanks very much for having us here in your office. If you could start by telling us about Lithium's journey, how it started, where it came to be, and what would you say have been some of your key achievements so far? So we started way back in 2014 before EVs were the buzzword. Yeah. Uh, today we are roughly 2,500 vehicles, mm. 1,700 chargers across 15 cities in India. Mm. Uh, we serve 100 plus clients yeah. in the B2B space. In addition, we've started a supply agreement with a strategic partnership with Uber okay. uh, in helping them decarbonize uh, the urban mobility space. So mm. this is where we are. I think we're very proud to, to been, have been pioneers and to be where we are today. But what would you say sets you apart from your competitors? Because let's admit it, it is a competitive space and every other player in the mobility space wants to go green. How are you differentiating yourself? I think uh, essentially anyone can buy. You're right, right? Anyone can buy an electric car. Mm. Uh, and, you know, many people have bought electric cars in the past, especially, the, you know, the business consumers. And what we, what, the way we are different is we can utilize an electric vehicle mm. better and yeah. provide better services at a cheaper rate to our customers okay. uh, and how do we do that we use that we do that using technology mm. technology is the bedrock of everything that we do yes. uh, so whether it's a connected car whether it's algorithms that allow us to schedule our vehicles better saying mm. which car should charge and which charger for how long whether it's recruitment of drivers whether it's maintenance of cars yeah. you know the three pillars of our business customer driver and vehicle mm. all three interplay mm. and connecting that through technology and that's what i think we do better than anybody else in this space mm. and that allows us to provide some un unmatchable value mm. to our customer well let's talk about that technology sure. because like you said it is the bedrock of everything that's happening at lithium sure. but there's also emerging trends in this space and it's you know as any other company that has to remain agile you have to adapt yourself to it so how are you at lithium pivoting to adapt to these trends and what are these emerging trends that you're seeing shaping up in this space i think digital transformation per se is absolutely key i mean right from day one we realize that it is technology that's going to be a differentiator. Like I said, there are three pillars, customer, vehicle, and driver. Yeah. And obviously with new technologies coming in, like mm. AI and ML, how do we use this data, vast amount of data, mm. right? We poll our cars, for example, every five seconds. We get 150 parameters from that. Then we get you know, the entire life cycle of a driver, life cycle of a vehicle, the amount of information that comes in. How do you make it uh, uh, kind of interact with each other. Mm. How do you ensure causality is there? How do you ensure end user computing? Yeah. You know, this is the age in which coder is not the king, but the end user is the king, Absolutely. right? Yeah. And companies like Salesforce have enabled that, yeah. right? And therefore for us, using that, using this vast amount of structured data mm. with AI and ML, for us to be able to predict, mm. right? Across different facets of our business. Mm. I think that is something that you know, we pride ourselves. You know, for our viewers that may be benefiting from your journey, tell us how you undertook this digital transformation journey and what were some of the business objectives for a company that is based on tech? Uh, I would say, you know, with respect to customers, uh, from our sales process, how do we kind of reduce the sales time? Yeah. How do we provide, post our sales, how do we provide, you know, uh, uh, better service levels, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Two, from a driver perspective, how do we make sure that there is complete transparency? Mm. From a vehicle management perspective, how do we make sure that 
lead times are compressed, uh, availability, reliability, performance of the assets is improved. And of course, as an enterprise, most importantly, how can we actually provide a single source of truth yeah. and data yeah. and allow and empower every employee in the company, regardless of where they stand in the hierarchy, with the power to delve into the data, improve not only their performance, but that of the team, but also the enterprise. What well, you talked about people and uh, you know, the idea is really to talk about how you're empowering, you know, not just one set of people, but the whole ecosystem of partners that you work with. Correct. Just give us some insights on so that. So let me give you an example. That's a, that's a, you know, very pertinent question. On a vehicle maintenance side, yeah. right? Uh, we buy, all these assets are owned by us. Uh, vehicles make or break your business, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of availability, performance, yeah. and reliability. Mm -hmm. For this, we are dependent on the OEMs, that's the people who make the vehicles, and of mm. course, their service partners. Mm. So there's an extended enterprise. What we've done is use Salesforce mm. as a workflow platform. Mm. So now we provide not only our various teams, whether it's maintenance, accounts, our operations, but also outside of the enterprise. Mm. So the OEM uh, representatives, mm. we have the various service centers across India mm. that have now access to that different dashboards so that this, you know, if a vehicle requires uh, 100 hours for it to be made okay, mm. then it must take only 100 hours, right? Mm. All of this waiting lead time and this, I would say, this latency in decision making has been reduced mm. because everyone now has access to the same information. Yeah. And, you know, therefore it elicits absolutely, you know, coherent and very uh, uh, actions in all the, in the same direction. Well, uh, let me get specific to one of your partners, and that is the drivers, very core to what you do here at, uh, you know, providing transportation for urban Indians. Um, tell us about the management for, you know, that set of your partners and, you know, how you're using technology to deliver better outcomes. So driver is the, I would say, the most important pillar in this business. Without the driver, we don't have a business per se, right? And, uh, you know, labor markets are different in different parts of India. A driver as a uh, person or as a vignette is is very very unique what does the driver want wants transparency in dealings right so right from our if you look at recruitment process mm. we have field scouts that will go out mm. we have tele callers who make you know call drivers in tell them about proposition why lithium is the best place for them to join and all of that drivers come in walk in then there's an impanelment process there's a lot of documentation and compliance management that needs to be done. Okay. And of course, once the driver comes on board, the entire process of managing the payouts, hmm. the driver being able to see their own earnings, right? That is very, very key. Hmm. And then of course, driving up the performance, hmm. you know, making them sure that they, what do they need to do to earn more, hmm. right? That whole process from scouting to payrolling, to exit that whole process and nutrition yeah. management, joint, everything is managed on, on from, a digital from, from platform. From your sales to your fleet management, technology is what you're using to streamline the entire process. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, on sales, as a B2B sales company, we have different stage gates, mm -hmm. right? Right from prospects to contracting, that entire process is managed on, uh, on a technology uh, platform that is Salesforce. Mm -hmm. On, like I said, on vehicles, the entire, every time we buy a vehicle from there to every transaction on the vehicle, including its telematics, everything is available on Salesforce. On the customer side, like I said, post contracting as well. Yeah. The, you know, the, the interaction with the customer, how are we delivering? Hmm. You know, we promise certain value when we sign the contract, are we delivering to that? Hmm. That is managed. Of course, uh, on the, I told you of the driver, vehicle and customer, I think the entire process yeah. and all of this data, then we use something like Tableau, mm. which sits on, on top of that, mm. so that the end user, for example, can find out the five whys. Tell us about Tableau, I mean, um, what is the system that you're using and how have you benefited from it? I think for us, you know, finding out causality and finding out reasons why things have, could be better mm. than what they are today. Uh, drilling down into what caused a certain issue and the and the you know that is very essential hmm. it in the past 
all analytics used to lie with, for example, a set of people in MIS department or a, you know okay. data department. But what we've done is users today, mm -hmm. right, with the ease with which people can create dashboards to monitor their own performance, their team, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, there are some fantastic examples of how people have learned with ease these tools mm -hmm. and are now creating for themselves different aspects. And that agility mm -hmm. in which workflow processes can be changed, data can be viewed mm -hmm. and analyzed, mm -hmm. doesn't require a specific skill set, but that's kind of democratized across the organization. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, people with, you know, master's degrees, people with, you know, 10th standard level education are able to do that. And that, I think, is the beauty and simplicity mm -hmm. with which technology is built. Well, uh, let me let me just take that further and ask you for you know someone a business like you who's looking to undertake digital transformation, uh, would you be able to quantify the benefits that you saw from it so that you know uh, sure, we we can sure. put into words how this transformation can actually help businesses? Sure, I think whether it is you know about a twenty percent reduction in our mm -hmm. sales lead time, a three x increase in our funnel size. Mm -hmm. I mean it's. Obvious from the way that we've grown, we've grown, you know, after post-COVID, COVID was a bad time for urban mobility, say, yeah. per se, but, you know, since COVID, we've grown roughly 8x, hmm. right? Okay. And the testament to that growth, right? And that requires everything from better vehicle management. It requires, uh, you know, your ability to hire more drivers and retain yeah. them. And of course, managing customers, hmm. you know, we had 25 customers just at the, just when COVID ended in 22, now we have 100. Hmm. We were in five cities, we are now in 15, hmm. right? And in, from a business perspective, you know, whether it is our margins per car, revenue okay. per car, we're able to sweat the asset much better, hmm. right? Retain more drivers. Hmm. Uh, and, you know, all of our operational fill rates hmm. are much better than what we are today. Would you be able to put numbers to some of these metrics? Sure, sure. So, like I said, you know, sales has grown 8x. Yeah. Revenue per car has grown, I would say, 50%. Hmm. Right, uh, driver fill rates are now, you know, uh, are 99 percent. Okay. Right. So I think from that perspective, these are metrics. I think vehicle health availability. Hmm. You know, we have roughly about nine percent, uh, 91 percent availability across, uh, you know, uh, uh, a two-year spectrum. So I think we're, we're in a fairly good state. Every company requires a a backbone hmm. on which you know, the company works on, right? And a single source of truth, right? And for us, we started our journey with sales for with just sales, right? Mm -hmm. Typical sales process, blah, 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 put it all in together. Yeah. Then we realized, why can't we use it for the other two pillars, right? Both the drivers as well as uh, 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 our vehicles. Mm -hmm. And we've done that across. And like I told you before, we've gone beyond the enterprise, yeah. right? And for us, therefore, uh, you know, it's helped us systemize and give a standard SOP as we grow. You know, imagine starting in a new city, how do you get people then to kind of do the same things in the same way that the other cities do? So all of these technologies allow us to scale quicker and that's very, very important. Okay, uh, let me then end by asking you, um, how do you see the next, say, 10 years or so shaping up for lithium? What do you think that you're doing differently using technology that's going to help you stay ahead in this game? I think we are now moving away, we are moving into a realm in which we see ourselves as, you know, the, obviously we've been pioneers, but really moving that one step ahead in which we're going to see more drivers mm -hmm. adopt EVs. We're going to work with small fleet owners in you know transforming that fleet from IC to EVs. So really being the catalyst in converting the current 99% of the market that works on IC fleet yeah. into EV. And how do we use technology? We use whatever we have built for ourselves, yeah. offer it to them. Yeah. So therefore from that perspective, I think if, if we can help the entire, you know, a million vehicles convert yeah. and the, all of the software and tools that are available for everybody, I think that's that's. I think that will be true transformation. That's in the years. To and we wish you all the very best with it, Sanjay. Thanks very much for speaking to CNBC TV.